Hey viewers and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Paul is still away in the UK watching his beloved Tottenham and visiting his family. And joining us today is our Manning Rangers League winner Gavin Radford. Gav, welcome back. Morning much. good to be back again. Uh, lots of games during the week, so yeah. a very uh, active week as far as the betting goes. Yeah, you're right. And now joining us shortly will be our regular UK correspondent, Stevie Braham. Now, we kick off, as always, with our last one standing competition. And while the main competition was won by Gavin Wright, our two ladies continue. And unfortunately, we still haven't got a winner. Both the girls went out in midweek. So both Tracy Anderson and Fiona Trasman, ladies, lunchtime Saturday for your next uh, selection for your ladies' 2500 prize. Let's now go over to our UK correspondent, Steve. Good morning. Morning, Bart. Morning, Gav. Morning, Steve. Uh, Steve, well, we've got a midweek reviews, and uh, after you yeah. were gloating, after thumping uh, Paul's beloved Tottenham last week, and you gave him a, an earful, I've got to ask you what happened against Notts Forest on Tuesday. Well, that first half was as bad as I've seen this play in a very long time, and. Uh, and obviously, you know, the, the manager didn't think much of it. Hoiked three players off before the half hour mark, which is almost unheard of. Yeah. You know, I could see him on the touchline fuming. I mean, they were like statues. Uh, didn't move when Forrest was scoring. But the second half, we played a lot better. Missed, missed a hat for the chances. Yeah. But, the, but the game was done. So, uh, big game on Saturday. So, you know, they need to, they need to put that to bed. Uh, hopefully on the training ground, uh, they've sorted a few things out, but uh, disappointing, really. Yeah, I think that's uh, the right word, disappointing. I said, I watched it, but uh, second, when he made the three changes, has there ever been three made, uh, changes? Can you remember made that early? No, no I, I mean, I've been to a game. I remember Fulham played Chelsea many years ago. We beat them, uh, and, uh, and after half an hour, uh, Mourinho took a couple of players off. Yeah which was, uh, you know, but three in one go yeah. was, uh, you know, almost unheard of, you yeah. know, th especially none of them were injured. Yeah. So, look, it'd be interesting to hear his take on it, uh, you know, when he's calmed down a bit. So hopefully on the training ground, they've sorted things out. You know, there's not sort of bad, you know, you, you don't want the sort of players to, you know, they look disappointed, the players that were yeah. taken off, needless to say, but... Uh, you know, none, none of them played that well in the first half. He could have taken any yeah, three off, I think. Yeah, you're right. That would have been me. I'd have been on the outside looking for a taxi. But uh, I think what he did was right. You've got to put your stamp down. And uh, I just felt for the fans, but uh, disappointing performance. Gav, you watched the uh, early game, Newcastle-Everton. A little bit unlucky, Newcastle? Yeah, a little bit unlucky. They had a lot of possession. They dominated the game. Um, just didn't have any finishing touches. The, yeah. Um, physical game. Yeah, the Everton defenders take no prisoners, uh, but Newcastle should have put that game to bed long, yeah. long before penalty came around. Yeah, dodgy penalty, I, I saw it, but uh, anyway, great point for Everton. I watched the Burnley Wolves game, watched quite a lot of it. It's, it's, one word to describe Burnley, I know he's trying to change it, but, but they are just so naive. Wolves have got one or two players that are danger from a set piece and they get caught. I felt for them because they are trying, they're now unbeaten in four, but... I don't know, can't have either team at the moment. Uh, Steve, West Ham Tottenham. I know I'd message you when you were 3-0 down and you'd uh, turned over. What did you think? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Tottenham started off really quickly. As, as I turned it over, they scored. You know, in the end, uh, you know, probably on a even. I think Ange sort of said it. You know, he wasn't overly happy with the performance. Yeah. You know, they had, they had opportunities. They both had opportunities to win it. A draw, I guess, in the light of the other results for Tottenham with the Villa losing, I guess it's a point gained. But, uh, you know, I think both managers probably a little disappointed. But, you know, I think it's probably on as even in the end. Yeah. Gav, on to Wednesday. You watched the uh, Man City game. What do you think? Uh, budget, I mean, a totally different game to the game against Arsenal. Uh, Man City completely dominated the game. Yeah. I know Villa had one or two injuries. But Foden at the moment, unplayable. He's taken over from good to one that who carried that team last year. Yeah. Foden, for me, is, is stepping up and pushing Man City forward to the title. Uh, Steve, uh, notably, he started Doku and Grealish. Yes, yeah, interesting. I mean, it, uh, I, I think, you know, obviously when I saw the team sheet, I thought, wow, no De Bruyne and Haaland. I, you know, I, I sort of thought, well, he's obviously saving them for the, uh, Champ for the Champions 
Champions League. I mean, they got you know they've got a lot of games, and uh, you know De Bruyne obviously has to be managed. Uh, but Foden, absolute class. I mean, if Gareth Southgate hasn't got his name inked in uh, as a starter for England, I'd be shocked. I mean, yeah. he just took those goals. And the second half, I mean, they, they looked... Uh, I mean, having watched that Arsenal game, which was so drab, uh, you know, they really had that cutting edge a cutting edge back City. Yeah. Steve, did you watch the Arsenal-Luton game? Yeah, I watched quite a bit of that. It was, uh, I think... Luton try. I mean, the one thing about them is they don't give up. You yeah. know, the teams don't beat them easily. But at 2 0, you always sort of felt that was it. And I thought they sort of went through the motions a little bit in the second half. So I sort of watched the City game yeah. uh, most of that. But, uh, you know, the, the Arsenal did what they had to do. You know, it, Luton are obviously still in, in trouble now with uh, Forrest winning and Everton getting a point. So, you know, the bottom three look like the bottom three at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I changed over. I changed over. I was watching the Arsenal game in the first 15, 20 minutes. It just looked like they were going out there to get a goal, keep injury free, yeah. and put the game to bed. And then that's what they did. And they just kept the ball possession wise. There was no real big urgency from them. They had done enough. Yeah. Well, I watched the Brentford Brighton game, and that was desperation. Referee let a lot of tackles go, Steve. I've noticed lately, a lot of the, the refs are just sitting to play a game. You could have brought them back, booked a few guys, but. No little fair result, even though a couple of teams, Danny Welbeck, great chance late on, but anybody watches the highlights, I don't think there'll be too many. On to Thursday night and uh, Liverpool, Sheffield United, Steve, how many? Well, yeah, exactly. You can't see anything other than a comfortable home win. And, you know, Liverpool, you know, want to do that and get, you know, keep their goal difference high. Yeah. Uh, I'd be surprised if they don't win by at least three. Yeah. yeah, I've taken the nine to ten th over three and a half goals. Over three, three and a half goals. Yeah, I, think yeah. be, I think could be could be a route tonight. Yeah, I think they've got to close the gap. And Man United, Chelsea, Steve, what do you think? Well, I was so disappointed with with the way United played at Brentford last weekend. I mean, you know, they were very lucky to have got away. They could have won it, but you know. Brentford probably deserved more than a, than a point. They, and I know they got more interest again. I mean, Martinez came back and is out again. You know, Lindelof is out. You know, they uh, you just don't know what you get. I think, you know, Chelsea, surprisingly, for all their poor form, they've only lost one in 15 at home. Yeah. Uh, which was that Wolves wolf. performance. I th yeah, I think this is going to be a tough game for, for United. You know, you, 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 you're hoping they're going to show some fight like they did against Liverpool in the Cup. But if they don't, you know, Chelsea might, uh, you know, might just edge that. I, I, hate, I hate to say it, but I think United are on the, on the course to get another big Harding, a 4 or 5 nil coming one of these days. Their defending is atrocious. I mean, letting teams have 22, 23 shots at goal. You know, if you concede early and that's the type of form you're going to have with no defence, you, you're going to look for a big Harding coming one of these days. I agree. I've watched them four times this season. They've got worse every time. Tactically, I think this manager's out of his depth, but Chelsea aren't the greatest, but you give them a few chances, they'll punish us. But defensively, they're a joke as well. But anyway, on to the weekend's betting and uh, lunchtime kickoff. I'm sure Pep must have said something after the game. When's that early kickoff, Steve? Surely Man City are going to be too good. Yeah, yeah, you would think so. Look, Palace uh, don't, uh, not, uh, you know, make it hard for teams at home. And as you say, lunchtime kickoff. Yeah. You know, he, he's got the options to uh, rotate again. You know, probably see Harlem back. Um, you, you can't, you can't see anything other than a, a City win. Uh, and they, they have to, they have to keep pace with uh, with Liverpool and Arsenal. So I think it will be close, but I think City, City should win. You think, Gav? Yeah, Palace are giving, giving away goals cheap again. Uh, they're, they're, at times, they're a hard team to break down. Uh, since Roy's gone, I think they've just loosened up again. And I think uh, Haaland will get, get a couple of goals in this game. Uh, he'll have more space uh, to play in. It was interesting, Roy Keane's comments about Haaland, um, playing in front of a defence that sits deep. Yeah. He doesn't have the space, he doesn't have the movement. He's a big guy, so... You know, you don't see run onto the ball. I think in this game, I think he could get a few chances. Yeah, Man City to win by more than one, nine to ten. I thought that was a good price. Steve, Aston Villa, Brentford. How do you see it? Yeah, well, look, Brent Villa needs to sort of, uh, you know, need, need to get back to winning ways. They had a good win against Wolves, but obviously came unstuck last night. I think that they should edge it. Brentford and make themselves, you know, I think Brentford, are, are, for me, are not a relegation uh, no, candidates. No, correct, you no. know, they played very well. He had, it, just going on what sort of Gav was saying, they had 31 mm -hmm. shots against United yeah. uh, and, had, and had to rely on a defender in the last minute. I, I think that Villa should win. 
but they had one or two injuries. Sort of Watkins was out, and uh, I'm not quite sure how serious that is. But obviously, they need their key key four key players back. I think I think if it is to be a winner, Brent, uh, Villa for me, but maybe by the odd goal in three. Yep. The Villa's one of these teams, Steve. I don't know how big the squad is, but I seem to, they seem to have the same players playing week in and week out. Mm. Now they've got a few injuries, they're going to have to rotate a little bit and bring a few players in. I, I would have made them one of the best bets of the weekend. Um, but just, because they're also at home, but just with the injuries, Ollie Watkins up front, who gets them that goal when they're desperate. Because yeah. Brentford's not going to make it easy for them because they're also looking for a result. Uh, but I would lean towards Villa to win this one. Yeah, you've got a fancy Villa, but I think there's going to be goals, Steve. I think this is going to be a, a four five goal thriller. One thing about Brentford, they don't try and play football. They go route one. You know, Ivan Tony's a, a handful for most people. And I took a lurky. I backed Brentford to score over one and a half goals at 17 to 10. I've liked what I've seen. As you say, against Man United, how they never scored three or four, I don't know. Got a funny feeling they'll get a couple this game, but... I wouldn't disagree Aston Villa getting the points, but I think there'll be goals of plenty in this game. Relegation battle, Steve. Everton, Burnley. What do you think? Yeah, well, look, I mean, Everton haven't won. I think they've equaled their worst ever um, run of games without winning in the top flight, something like 13. I think that uh, this is a huge game. Everton have still got in the next week or so, you know, uh, the, the panel to, could, could decide on another points deduction. Yeah. They can't afford to slip up here. I think Everton have to win. You know, on the other hand, Burnley, you know, could find themselves adrift if they uh, if they lose. So, you know, I think this is going to be a, a really physical game. But I think Everton might just overpower them if they could. But it, I think it's the sort of game that could be one nil. Gav? Yeah, I'm going to lean towards the home team here, Everton. Uh, 16th versus 19th in the log table, so it tells you everything about the two squads. Poor season for both of them. Everton, I think with the goalkeeper that they've got and the two central defenders, might keep Burnley at bay, but it's going to be a tough physical game, this uh, one at all costs. One's going to actually keep you alive, and the other one's going to get basically survival. So a tough game. I think Everton will shade it. Yeah, I've got a fancy Everton. Just watching Burnley on, uh, was it Tuesday night against Wolves? They are so like, naive at set pieces. And one thing Everton are good at set pieces. I'll be having a few rand on Tarkovsky and the, the other young centre half, Braithwaite, to score. They'll be big prices, but you can't. Everton, 13 games they haven't won. You know, I just cannot believe that at home they haven't won in four. But if they can't beat Burnley, they're in serious trouble. But six to 10, not for me. Steve, if ever your players owe the supporters, this is it. What do you see? How do you see it ending up? Uh, well, I think there'll be goals. You know, the one thing that uh, we seem to be doing at the moment is leaking goals. Newcastle are dangerous. They've got a good forward line, yeah. but it's defensively where they've got a lot of injuries. And I think that, uh, you know, if, if we're brave, we, we can score a few, but I think they're quite capable as well. Yeah. I can see this being, you know, maybe a high scoring uh, score draw, but. Uh, they should be entertaining, you know. Newcastle have got to go for it themselves because they, yeah. they obviously want a European place. You know, I think I think that's just beyond us now. But I think, you know, we haven't got many home games left, and it's a sellout again. You know, hopefully it will be an entertaining game. Gav, yeah, okay. uh, Fulham just can't start the way they started last week. Um, Newcastle got a few injuries, uh, but uh, Gumeresh in the middle of the park he keeps him going forward. And my value bet for the weekend will be Newcastle, just value at the price of seventeen yeah. to ten. But a tough game. Fulham, a uh, little jackal and hard at the moment, so winning games and losing games. Uh, tough game to call, but I'm going to lean as my value bet, Newcastle. Yeah, you know, the, the boys are going down like troopers, Newcastle's back for. You know, I was always, uh, I'm, I'm over Newcastle as well, Steve. Your last two performances, you know, we mentioned it last week at Sheffield United. I just couldn't believe, not that you, know, you guys scored three, but you conceded three in. The defending, something's not right. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's away from home, but your guys, other supporters, are a massive, a massive result. And, you know, I just think 26 to 10 is the draw is the right way to go. I think this could be three all. It's going to be a high scoring game, Steve. I agree. But uh, any result wouldn't shock me. But uh, of the two teams on recent form, you've got a fancy Newcastle. Steve, bottom of the league, bottom of the league, Luton. Great, but this is the game. If they don't get this, Steve, I think they're in trouble. Can you see them beating Bournemouth? Well, look, they had that amazing first half performance a few weeks ago. That's right. No doubt. But, uh, 
uh, vitality where they went 3-0 up but obviously then conceded so Bournemouth know that they've they've maybe got the measure of them but as you huge game for Luton because again you know they've gone quite a few games without winning you know they, they, they're very competitive in almost every game they play yeah. but they've got to start turning uh, you know the, this into wins because they are otherwise you know Forrest get I don't know if Forrest will get point this weekend but you know there's still a few points adrift so I, I think I think this could end up all square Bournemouth can make themselves hard to beat you know they picked up uh, you know a good three points during the week yeah. Gab, how do you see uh, it? I'm with you, Steve. I think this game's got draw written all over it. I think Bournemouth, will, uh, Bournemouth and Luton will both score. I think it'll be a score, score yeah. draw game. Um, Luton, have, funny enough, have been losing their games like 2-1, uh, 3-2. They have scored. So they're capable, of, just on their own patch, can they hold out? Uh, yeah. But I think it draws a fair result for both teams. Yeah, I've got to agree, it'll be tired. Yeah, Luton has scored in the last 11 home league games. So that's 11 at 10 to score over one and a half goals a suggestion. But Bournemouth, yeah, they cost me money. I thought Palace would edge it, but they've become hard to beat, Bournemouth, and uh, I don't see them losing at Luton. On to our second page, Wolves versus West Ham, Steve. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, look, West Ham uh, played well in patches at Newcastle, played well in patches against Tottenham. You know, I think they'd be disappointed that they only got sort of one point from the two games. Wolves, on the other hand, uh, you know, obviously lost at Villa, point during the week but they are without you know their two key forwards yeah. and I think that has certainly impacted in, in recent weeks again I can see this is the sort of game that could end up as a, as a draw Gav how do you see it yeah I think Wolves West Ham I, I fancy West Ham um, for me they've been playing quite well lately I think uh, Moyes has got them going I don't know if he's going to be around next year there's a lot of talk that he'll be he'll be leaving West Ham but I think West Ham for me will shave this game yeah, I was going to make West Ham my best bit of the weekend, Steve, but I thought 18 to 10 was too big. You know, I watched them against Newcastle, and I couldn't believe 3 1 up, cruising. The penalty was questionable on Calvin Phillips, and they gave it away. And midweek, you know, they fought hard against Tottenham. I've watched Wolves' last two games, they were diabolical against Aston Villa. If Burnley had more about them, I think they would have beat them. And uh, I just think 18 to 10, West Ham. I know they've had a couple of hard games lately. But I'm going to be all over West Ham. To score over one and a half goals, uh, it was like 12 to 10. So I'm all over that as well. But 18 to 10 West Ham is definitely for me. Big game of the weekend anyway at the top for me, Steve. Tricky one is Brighton-Arsenal. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, Brighton, uh, a lot, I mean, they have, there's no question, in the last few months, they've fallen away quite a bit compared to where they were. Uh, but I think that they're quite capable of giving Arsenal a tough game. Yeah. You know, this is a tricky game. You know, Arsenal have, have not done well against Brighton uh, in the last couple of seasons. But I think I can just see Arsenal getting there and, and grinding out a result. Brighton have been sort of, they dominate games, but they're not scoring. I mean, last night was a case in point. Yeah. You know, it sounded like they had most of the game, but, but couldn't score. I, I, you know, they came close at Tottenham recently, but I just think Arsenal, you know, got a bit more steel about them at the moment and uh, they can't afford to drop points I think I think this could be a, a low scoring game but for me Arsenal is slight favourites yeah yeah I think Arteta's got Arsenal playing yeah, he, he wouldn't say he took the foot off the pedal last night but he kept some energy in the reserve yeah. for the players go out there get a workman like result Brighton Danny Welbeck <laughs> I don't know what they do with this guy. He's, one day he scores a magnificent goal, yeah, really and then the, so last the night he yeah. missed 10 simple chances to yeah. score. And if you're going to be a top striker in the league, you've got to put those chances away. And he does put a lot of pressure on the, on the Brighton side by not taking these chances. But for me, Arsenal, I think Arsenal on the run to the title, they've got to win games like this. Yeah. So I think they'll win. Yeah, I think Arsenal squeak this, Steve. I agree. You know, watching Brighton, but I just think Arsenal's the wrong team to try and play that against because they will push out. Their back four is nice and tight. Got a fancy Arsenal, but Brighton are always a dangerous team. They're at the Europa League, so all their players are slowly available. But for me, I'm all over Arsenal. I think they're going to edge this. The big game for us Man United supporters, Steve. I don't see us winning. Give me, give me anything to hold my hat, hat on, Steve. What do you think? Well, look, you can, you, you can only look at the, that, that game in the cup and obviously with the passion of the crowd, you know, the players were up for it and they need another performance like that because, you know, if they play like they did at Brentford, then Liverpool are going to go there and going to turn them over. Yeah. And, you know, the, uh, you look at the odds, you know, the odds are stacked in favour of Liverpool. And I think that uh, they're going to want 
Klopp will want to make amends for that uh, that defeat at, uh, at Old Trafford. And I'm sadly, I think uh, you know Liverpool will go there and get the result they need and, and stay top. All right, Gab, what do you think? Yeah, I went against my beloved United last time, and I fancied Liverpool strong to win. And uh, we actually got a result which shocked, I think, shocked the world and everyone else. But Liverpool, for me, too, too good. I think this could be the game that United are dreading. It could be another four or five yeah. if we defend the way we've been defending lately. I think Klopp will put this game to bed, to take the points and move on. Yeah, I agree. I was at that game last week. The crowd are up for it. But, you know, Bruno Fernandes, to me, is the biggest problem United have got, especially defensively. They play three in the midfield. He's the, the, the one that's further forward. But he just drifts and he never marks. We get outplayed in the midfield. And Liverpool got caught once. It ain't going to happen again, you know. I just don't see it. They'll be up for it, and I hate to say it. I think 7 to 10 is a good price. I can't put them in my bets because uh, I hope they don't win. But to me, I think Liverpool are going to give United a good hiding. Sheffield United, Chelsea, Steve. Hard to trust Chelsea away from home. 4 to 10, I think, is a lot shorter, even though Sheffield United are almost down. Can you see an upset there? Um, I'm not sure about an upset. I think they're certainly game. I mean, yeah. there's no question uh, in that second half against Fulham. They, they did play well, to be fair to them. Although at the end, they were hanging on because, yeah. you know, obviously their confidence was shot once, you know, with all the defeats they've had. Uh, I think it depends on what happens again tonight. They could, they could suffer a heavy defeat tonight. And it depends whether that they carry that over against Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you say, Chelsea away from home can't be trusted. Then, you know, they're... Um, but I think that they've probably got enough in the squad to, to go there and get a result. But I think it will probably be, you know, it won't be one of these five nils, but no. uh, I think Chelsea should be too strong. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sheffield United's damage it's uh, done tonight. If they lose heavily tonight, yeah. one or two things, they'll just fall in a hole in the weekend or they'll come out and try and fight as hard as they can because the crowd will be against them. So it's a, it's a tough game for them, but I think Chelsea will win this game when it comes to me, especially if Liverpool and put four or five past them tonight. Yeah, I just don't trust Chelsea. And I understand Sheffield United tonight, but at home they fought hard. They scored goals in quite a few of them. I know they've been given a hiding, but Chelsea can't defend. So I've looked at over two and a half, over three and a half goals. I think there's goals are plenty here. I just couldn't take four to ten uh, Chelsea. And last but not least, Sunday night, Tottenham, not Forest, Steve. This should be a good game. Yeah, it should. I mean, the only thing Tottenham got to at home, they keep conceding the first goal. They, yeah. you know, they need to. They need to stop doing that. Uh, look, Tottenham. Tottenham have got to look to this and think that they need. They, you know, win because if Villa get a result, uh, you know, over the weekend before them, you know, Tot Tottenham have got an opportunity to catch them otherwise. But yeah. uh, you know, I think Forest will be game. You know, obviously they they picked up uh, four points uh, for those two home games but I think Tottenham should start as favourites yep. yeah Tottenham definitely start favourites and being at home um, they will be big crowd uh, they're just going to be careful of Forrest the boy Alana yeah. up front they've got a lot of pace up front in their team uh, the striker's name we lose me at the moment. Is it Wood? Yeah, yeah. They, they've got some good players in Forrest just you know bad start to a season when you get promoted sets you back uh, it's not going to be easy because Spurs do play a high line in defence and if Ilana gets behind them, it could yeah. be trouble for them. And if they do give a goal away, you know, the team that's fighting relegations always puts in a little extra effort. Yeah. Tough game, but you would think Spurs would win the game. Yeah, Spurs to win both teams to score. It's interesting, Steve, speaking of Paul in midweek, he said, I think it's eight games in a row they haven't scored in the first half. When he just said, sorry, he well, said, wait, oh, 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 at home. Oh, oh, oh. I just yeah, couldn't believe crazy, I said, it. Yeah, the, the amount of yeah, goals they have yeah. scored. He said they haven't scored in the first half. And even against Luton, they were 1 0 down. So if you want to have an outsider back, Forrest to score the first goal. But I went Tottenham to win both teams to score 2 to 1. Steve, uh, let me get the quick uh, on the Premiership. Uh, Who have you got winning it? I, you know, it's, I know it's tough. No, but, it's, uh, in Liverpool's, it, it's in Liverpool's hands because okay. they've got that slight advantage. But. You know, watching the way that uh, City destroyed Villa last night, the second yeah. half, it's going to be hard to bet against them. Yeah, OK, fair enough. Uh, relegation, you think the bottom three being Sheffield United, Burnley and Luton? I think so. I, you know, unless there's something happens with Everton and, and a big and another points deduction, I think that, uh, uh, 
you know, Luton looked like they could get out of it, but all of a sudden, they, you know, they, they can't get, they can't pick points up, let alone yeah. win games. So I, I just think that it's the, the, certainly the bottom two, but I think uh, I think it could still be, it could be the bottom three. Okay, okay. On to the championship, which is uh, definitely hotting up at the top. And uh, I'm glad they put this game on Friday, Steve. Uh, Rotherham, who will be relegated after the weekend against a Plymouth or Gal side who have just fired their manager. How do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, this is a huge game. Look, Rotherham are down. Yeah. You know, you know, they, they have to win every game by a big margin. Possible, I mean, their yeah. goal difference is about 20 worse than anybody. So they're down. Plymouth, you know, basically they were doing okay because of their home form, but they've now lost five in a row without scoring. Away, they, they picked up a few points. They sacked the manager. Interestingly enough, Neil Warnock made himself available oh, and they didn't want him. Not again. You know, I, I think Plymouth will go there and get a result. I think they realise this is a game they have to win. You know, Rotherham surprised everybody and, and won the other day, which yeah, is their first win in about yeah. 15. But I, I fancy Plymouth to go there and, and, and win. Yeah, I hope so. I hope they stay up. The only problem is sometimes with the pressure off with these teams at the bottom, they just have a full go and it seems to go for them. But uh, I went both teams to score just under 8 to 10. Norwich, Ipswich Town, Steve, this will be a good game. Yeah, a huge game. I mean, obviously Ipswich, uh, you know, still confounding everybody. I mean, nine wins and one defeat in their last ten. But Norwich are picking up, and this is a huge game. In, in recent years, when they played each other, uh, you know, Norwich have had the bragging rights, but yeah. all of a sudden, uh, Ipswich. I, th but I think though that the Canaries could, uh, you know, could raise, are going to raise their game for this. I mean, yeah. I mean obviously it's a passionate derby. Uh, I just fancy Norwich. I just got a feeling that they're gonna, you know, that you know, well, is, and it might. I don't know whether it will stop Ipswich is its sort of big run, but uh, I fancy Norwich. Yeah, so do I, Steve. I watched them against Leicester. A little bit unlucky, you know, just conceding the, the equaliser at the wrong time. But at home, they've won seven. Ipswich Town. I was so thrilled they beat Southampton, but they just concede too many goals. And uh, I'm glad it's an early kick off. The both teams deserve it. But of the two teams, I fancy Norwich as well. Blackburn, Southampton, Steve, you know, having watched Ipswich versus Southampton, I think they're going to take the foot off the gas here. I make Blackburn Rovers at 28 to 10, my value bet. They were unlucky. They cost us uh, Paul and I bet when they had three disallowed goals against Ipswich. I couldn't believe they went to Sunderland and won 5 1. I think this has got upset written all over it. Do you agree? Yeah, it's funny, actually. I, well, I looked at that and I looked at those odds and I thought, well, I mean, Blackburn, it was a, it was a super performance uh, at Sunderland. Absolutely destroyed them. Southampton, you know, I think they've given up on, on, yeah. on reaching top two. You know, and they've got a playoff place pretty much confirmed. Obviously, they'll want to finish as high in, in, in the, you know, at least fourth. So at least they get uh, yeah, the, the, home, the yeah. home draw second. But I, you know, like you, I fancy, I think these are good odds for Blackburn. And, you know, a bit inconsistent, but Sammy Smodix is, uh, yeah, keeps scoring, scoring goals. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I, th I think that there will be goals, but I just fancy them to yeah, cause a bit of an to upset. Great price. Part yeah. of City yeah. Hull, Steve. I watched the Hull against Leeds. For a long part of that game, they were competitive, and at times they were the better team. Cardiff, I've backed them once in recent time at home. They won three in a row. I backed them. They got beat by Sunderland, who've been woeful. This should be a good game. Yeah, definitely. I watched the Leeds Hull game, but Hull played very well until they uh, conceded that, that sloppy penalty towards yeah. the end. You know, they were definitely in the game. Uh, and in fact, you know, could have been, uh, could have given Leeds their first uh, shock at home for this season. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as you say, Cardiff, but I had a good win at Coventry last right, week. Won, you know, yeah. But I just wonder whether, I just wonder whether Coventry, you know, it's very easy to, to, to say they shouldn't be distracted, but I'm sure they are distracted by the really, uh, yeah. looming uh, cup semi-final. Uh, I, I think I, I can see Cardiff maybe holding them, but you know Hull haven't given up sort of hope of, a, of, of getting a playoff place. So I think of the two, I fancy Hull. Yeah, nine to ten is my play. Both teams to score. On to the next place, mentioning Coventry and home to Leeds United. Can they spring an upset? Yeah. Well, look, they're capable. Obviously, we know what they're capable of doing. But uh, I just wonder, you know, they, they lost to Cardiff and you, you just sort of think, you know, have they got one eye, you know, one or two of the players thinking, oh, you know, I go in for that 50-50. I don't want to miss this cup semi-final. Yeah. Leeds are on a run. Leeds, Leeds have got to win. Obviously, they, uh, you know, they're firing themselves in the top three. They, they've got to win. 
you know, I think there's no question because yeah. they played a game more. I, I, I think they will do it. I think there'll be goals. You know, I think Leeds forward line is just too strong. Yeah, uh, but I think it could be an entertaining game. The only thing is Coventry are seven, Steve. So uh, and while they're in the FA Cup, the last thing you want to do is not get in the playoffs. So that's my attempt and my enthusiasm for Leeds. But they've just been giving goals away, Leeds. That's my only concern. But yeah. on form, even money does does look a fair price. How does feel more wall, Steve? I'd hate to be paying to watch this. Yeah, a lot. How does feel? A mill had a little bit of a, a had a good run, but yeah. then. You know, it's a poor defeat at Rotherham. On the other hand, Huddersfield, you know, find themselves in that bottom three. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, they're going to look at this and think they've, they've got to get a result. You know, Millwall, as I say, I was surprised that they, they lost at Rotherham. Maybe they'll get the kick up the backside. But uh, for me, Huddersfield probably just start edging. Yeah, Huddersfield's struggling. Only one win and eight, so it won't be easy. Leicester City, Birmingham City. Birmingham City ended my boys Preston's... Uh, Playoff hopes on Monday. Yeah. Leicester City, Steve, surely they're going to be too good. Yeah, they, they should do. I thought they played uh, very well in the yeah. second half against Norwich. Definitely. They came back yeah. strongly. And, uh, you, know, I, 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 you know, and again, it's the sort of game they can't afford to slip up. Yeah. Birmingham, on the other hand, you know, they, had, they have had a terrible run, got their first win for, uh, you know, for, for, for the manager. So, uh, young player Jay Stans went on loan from Fulham. Scored his 10th goal for them. But I, I fancy Leicester to, to win that. Yeah, pressure game for Leicester. Leicester to win by more than one was 9-10, to 10, so that's my suggestion. Middlesbrough seem to be putting a run together, Steve, at home against Swansea City. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Middlesbrough, when you look at the table, you, you think they're adrift. They're, you know, they probably can't get a playoff place. But, yeah. you know, they, they, they're capable of beating you know, almost anybody, but on the other hand, then they slip up when you least expect it. Yeah. You know, Swansea are a tidy side, but they didn't have a good result. Uh, you yeah. know, they're disappointed with the result against QPR last weekend. Yeah. I, I, I think of the two, I fancy Middlesbrough at home. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. Nine to ten looks a fair price. On to our final page in the championship and uh, mention of QPR at home against relegation threatened Sheffield Wednesday. How do you see it going? Yeah, Q QPR have had a couple of good results. Yeah, uh, it's a good win at home last week. You know, I think they're putting themselves away now, and uh, you know, they're in, you know, when a couple of months ago they were like bottom of the form table, almost yeah. they're now sort of, you know, closer to the much closer to the top. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday looked like they were going to get out of trouble, but they've yeah. lost a few now. I just think that uh, QPR should be too strong at home. Yeah, I've got a fancy QPR and even money in all my bets. Stoke City West Brom. This will be a tight game, Steve. How do you see it going yeah, now? I mean, again, Stoke uh, pulled themselves up a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, West Brom, you know, want to, going to want to cement that uh, playoff place. And I just think, you know, West Brom is a little bit of class. I think if, they, if there is to be a winner, I fancy West Brom. Yeah, I've got to agree. Unbeaten and eight, got to fancy West Brom. Two to go, Steve. Inconsistent Sunderland up against an improving yeah. Bristol City. Which way do you think it'll go? Yeah, well, I mean, the crowd... Out, uh, you know, they were fuming with uh, Sunderland last week. Yeah. You, you'd like to think, you'd, you'd expect to think there should be a reaction because otherwise, uh, you know, heads are going to roll there, I think, again. Um, look, Bristol City are very inconsistent. You're not sure what you're going to get. You know, they've had big wins, you know, they're beating, you know, teams near the top. But away, they're not quite quite as, uh, as strong. I think, I, for me, I think Sunderland might just turn it around. But, uh, you know, I, you just... After that sort of defeat, you'd expect them to, to put in a performance. I think it will. So I'm, I'm going to go with a home win on the basis that they are better than that result showed last week. Yeah, I took the easy way out. Both teams to score just over 9 to 10. And last but not least, Steve Watford against Preston. Have my boys got a chance? Well, interesting. Well, interesting. Yeah, I, they do, obviously. They're a good odds. But my, my brother was saying that since Tom Cleverley has taken over, yeah. uh, they look a different side, Watford. You know, they're on the front foot, uh, looking like, you know, they want to go forward, score goals, uh, played very well against Leeds and West Brom. So I think on that basis, I'm probably going to have to go for a home win, I'm yeah. afraid. Got to agree. Gavin and I were speaking before we came on air about Tom Cleverley. And I watched them against Leeds. They played really well. Yeah, Leeds scored late to, to make it 2-2, but I was really impressed, and I hate to say it, I think 12-10 is quite a good thing, but you never know with Preston away from home. We better yeah. organise, but uh, anyway, let's hope we can try and turn it around because our playoff hopes are on an half edge. Steve, pressure time as well. I need your best bet and value bet, please. Well, 
although their form doesn't really show it, but I'm going to go for Plymouth. I think this is the game they know they have to win. Otherwise, they they could end up in the in the bottom three and Rotherham are down. So yeah. I think for me, Plymouth and my value bet. I was actually going to go for Blackburn. Yeah. Uh, I just thought those are good odds. That were, you know, they put in some good performances. They're not easy to beat at home, and that was a huge win last week. So. You know, I think that uh, it should be an entertaining game. There'd definitely be goals in that game. Yeah, 28 to 10 is a great pass. Steve, thanks as always, and we'll speak over the weekend. Sure. Cheers, Steve. Best. I'm sure. Okay. Bye, Ciao. PSL midweek, and uh, I'll go through a couple of games that we watched. Chiefs nil, Stellenbosch won. Oh, Chiefs, uh, unbelievable. They, just, yeah. they can't find any form. They can't score goals. Stellenbosch, on the other hand, second on the table. Oh. Unbelievable season. Chiefs, uh, it's only a matter of time before a right starts at their yeah. games. When you can't score, problem. It's amazing. Since we had Clive's funeral, we had a good few beers with Stephen. His team haven't lost. Oh, and they won a trophy. So let's hope it continues. Sundowns played the second team and still beat Richards Bay 1-0. Changed the whole 11. Yeah. Uh, best team in the country. Best team should be in Africa. Yeah, let's uh, hope so. They enter some major tournaments. Too good for the, for the rest of the teams. Yeah, and the game I watched last night, uh, Swallows won, Pirates won. Pouring rain, but it was it was yeah. absolutely pouring with rain. Um, both teams, you know, very hard to control the ball, bouncing off everything. Yeah, uh, fair result. Yeah, I couldn't believe the goal. Pirates trying to play it from the back in those conditions, made a mistake, bang bang. But uh, our guys aren't used to playing in rain, so a fair result in the end. Anyway, on to the weekend's betting, and uh, Saturday we have Chipper versus Chiefs. Can Chiefs rebound? Well, you would hope so, but on the, on the form that they're showing at the moment, I cannot see it. Uh, I'm sure going to lean towards Chipper yeah, because no, Chipper Chiefs are in such draw. bad form. Yeah, playing in East London, Chiefs haven't been down there for a while, so maybe getting away from Joe Berg will help, but hard to trust Chiefs, not scoring many goals, so the draw looks a player. Richards Bay versus Morocco Swallows. I was impressed with Swallows last night. They've shown a bit of form lately, but yeah. they're scoring a few goals, a little bit more resilience in defence. And I see a lot of the Richards Bay games have been played in the Mlazi. So yeah, that's where they're playing they, now. They're yeah. almost giving away their home ground advantage by travelling into Durban to play. Uh, open game, betting suggests that it lean towards a draw. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Swallows do, do win it by the odd goal. Yeah, 17 at 10 Swallows, I don't think it's a bad price. Orlando Pirates drawn too many games to be a contender. Golden Arrows, good result last night. Very good result. 2 0 down, came back to beat Gavin's team, which is normally very well organised. Uh, Pirates, for me, too many showboaters in the team, uh, yeah. back healing the ball, you're not getting enough support up front, shooting from long range, 40, 50 metres out. They've got to show change some consistency around the areas. But you think Pirates would win in Joburg? Yeah, it is hard to trust them. I think there'll be goals because Arrow scored most games. Stellenbosch, we mentioned Stephen earlier. This would be a good game. Second Kudra, well organised. Yeah, very good game this. Uh, Stellenbosch, the way the season's going, I'm going to give them the results. I think uh, home ground advantage will play a role. I see their gate takings are going up quite a, quite a few in the numbers. So the people are coming to support them. Yeah. Stephen's done an excellent job there. 14 to 10 looks like it could be Second versus third. So it uh, should be a good game. On to our final page in the PSL. and. Super Sport against TS Galaxy. I love watching TS Galaxy. They can play, but this game is back at Attridgeville. Super Sport have been playing further north, but back at Attridgeville, which will obviously help them. I see Super Sport threw away a two goal advantage yeah. last night when they were in complete control. Uh, Galaxy won 3 0, so it's, it's a very evened out game. Super Sport just can't keep a clean sheet at the moment. Yeah. I should we go both teams to school? Yeah, it was 12 to 10 when I last looked. That's my suggestion as well there. On to Sunday, Cape Town City, one win in nine, haven't won in six against Amazulu. Amazulu can't score goals, so they're the draw specialists of the league. Yeah, funny enough, I think it's Cape Town City only won two games this year, one was against Pirates. I think that uh, I'm going to give them a victory here because Amazly just can't score goals. Okay, Raul Ayem who now play at uh, Harry Gual in Maritzburg. They're unbeaten in five at home. Can you see them beating Polakwani? Uh, low scoring game, Budge. I think this is going to end in a draw. It should be one or two. two or, um, I can't see any team winning in this game. But, uh, all right, the draw. Always a tight pitch to play in Maritzburg, but uh, I always enjoyed playing at Harry Gual. Anyway, on to our Saturday Soccer Exotics. And we kick off with our score six. And the first game up, I've thrown the draw with Aston Villa at home against Brentford. I'm chancing Everton to beat Burnley. The field in the Fulham, Newcastle and Luton Town versus Bournemouth games. I don't see West Ham United losing at, at Wolves. And I fancy Arsenal to continue their premiership title campaign to be too good for Brighton, 2-1-6.
On to our second soccer six, our PSL one. I've gone Chiefs win and draw at Chipper United. I've gone Richards Bay win and draw at home against Swallows. I'm chancing Pirates to beat Golden Arrows. Arsenal to beat Brighton, the field and the Stellenbosch, Seca, Kuna United and Supersport United, TS Galaxy matches, 2-1-6. On to our score 10, it's uh, Aston Villa win and draw at home against Brentford, Everton to be too good for Burnley, Newcastle United win and draw against Fulham, as well as Bournemouth win and draw at Luton Town. I fancy West Ham United to beat Wolves. Onto the second page, I'm going the field in the Blackburn Rovers Southampton game. Leeds United win and draw at Coventry. Bankering Leicester City to beat Birmingham City. The field in the Stoke City versus West Brom match and Arsenal to win at Brighton, 288. Onto our soccer 13 for the weekend, I'm banking Arsenal to beat Brighton. Aston Villa to beat Brentford. Newcastle United win and draw against Fulham. Bankering West Ham to beat Wolves as long as Everton to beat Burnley. Going for Bournemouth to avoid defeat at home against Luton Town, as well as Blackburn Rovers, win and draw at home against Southampton. Onto the second page, I don't see Hull City losing at Cardiff City. Chancing Leeds United to be too good at Coventry City. Millwall to avoid defeat at Huddersfield Town. Queen's Park Rangers to beat Sheffield Wednesday. Bristol City, win and draw at Sunderland and Watford, win and draw against Preston North End. 2.56. On to our budgies bets for the weekend and on Saturday I'm going over two and a half goals, both teams to score Aston Villa Brentford. I think West Ham United will beat Wolves and Tottenham to beat Notts Forest and both teams to score 2,300 to 200. My team goals, I've gone for a couple of lurkers this week. I'm going Brentford, Newcastle, West Ham and Arsenal all to score over one and a half goals. 3,400 to 200. On to the championship, I'm going both teams to score. Rotherham versus Plymouth. Then Blackburn Rovers to beat Southampton and over two and a half goals. And QPR to beat Sheffield Wednesday, 3,400 to 200. My both teams to score sides, I've had to add another one because the odds are dramatically reduced. So I've got Norwich, Ipswich Town, Blackburn, Southampton, Cardiff, Hull City, Huddersfield, Millwall, and Sunderland, Bristol City, 3,200 to 200. There's no Spanish football, so we've had a dip in the Italian Serie A. I'm going Bologna to beat Frosinone, Inter Milan to beat Udinese on Monday, and over two and a half goals on both teams to score in the AC Milan Lecce and Roma Lazio, 3,300 to 200. And our Collis King six or Nixa, I'm going Man City to beat Crystal Palace. West Ham to beat Wolves, Arsenal to beat Brighton, Tottenham to beat Notts Forest, Athletic Bilbao to beat Mallorca, and Inter Milan to beat uh, Udinese, 3,900 to 200. Gav? I think I'll have some of that bet. I think that's like quite an appetizing bet, that one. Nice value there. Yeah. My best bet for the weekend, Budge, I'm going to go with Middlesbrough and okay. Liverpool. Uh, my value bet will be Newcastle at 17 to 10. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. Newcastle. But the only problem is when these teams have two bad away, home, away performances, you know the crowd will be Rebound. buying. So uh, goals are plenty. Guys, as always, thank you very much. And please remember to stay on side.